Good morning, Carolina. This is normally where we do the what's up with that report, but that's going to be tomorrow. Have no fear. Uh, that's tomorrow. We're going to talk about the Cape Fear this morning. There is a lot of history in southeastern North Carolina, both on land and right off the shores in the ocean. Thousands of ships have sunk off the coast, and they now sit on the sea bottom as both a habitat and a tourist attraction. These shipwrecks are victims of the Cape Fear. Just off the coast of North Carolina sits an underwater graveyard. Ships that once sailed the seas have found a final resting place waiting for the brave to come tour their wreckage. In our files down at Fort Fisher, we have historical accounts on over 5,000 shipwrecks that have occurred along our coast. Researchers like Robert Lawrence have spent many hours studying these sites. Some sit upright, others on their side, and a few upside down, but all underwater in an area nicknamed years ago by sailors the Cape of Fear. Historians say it was underwater sandbars three to four feet deep that wreaked havoc on these mariners. This area was deemed very treacherous and through numerous stories passed on, took on the simple yet daunting name Cape Fear. But when civil and world wars began, sandbars were the least of a sailor's worry. It was March 13, 1942, during World War II, when the SS John D. Gill took a hit from a torpedo. The tanker was on a trip to Philadelphia from Texas, stopping at the Charleston, South Carolina port with a cargo of crude oil. 25 miles off the Cape Fear coast, the torpedo from a German sub hit the tanker. There were 42 crewmen and seven naval armed guard on board. 23 of them never made it off. Here, the Casimir looks like a shipwreck. There's still beams and parts of the hull and that sort of thing. There's an anchor still on the stern that was a spare anchor, and the bow sticks up. The Casimir was a cargo ship, February 26, 1942, loaded with a shipment of molasses from Cuba en route to Maryland. The Casimir became a ghost ship. That night, German U-boats were reported in the area, so the Casimir traveled at full speed in hopes of avoiding a run-in. History books say the night was foggy and the captain of the Casimir didn't see the SS Laura ahead. They collided, sinking the Casimir. Five crew members died. Both of these vessels are visited every year by hundreds of both beginner and expert scuba divers. The ships act as a home for marine life and an extraordinary sight for the curious. These ships lay silent in an underwater graveyard. It's not every day one considers touring, touring a graveyard something to do for fun, but... When it's 80 feet underwater, you can call it downright fascinating. There are thousands of sunken ships buried in a watery grave along the North Carolina coast. Some of them you can check out firsthand. Here's part two of our special report, North Carolina Shipwrecks. It doesn't take long for the guys at Aquatic Safaris in Wrightsville Beach to get you out to a dive site. Their outfit takes dozens of scuba divers out to shipwrecks off the North Carolina coast every week. If you get far enough off, it's like diving in the Caribbean. A lot of people don't know that off our coast. Greg Woodby is one of Aquatic Safaris captains and instructors. This is how the boat is set up. Got us on the surface and the hide right down there. Pat Carroll is an experienced shipmate. And then we've got some of the most awesome shipwrecks in the world right here along the banks. And Tom Tillman kindly shot our underwater video with a special camera. All of us teamed up for a day of diving two shipwrecks, the Hyde and the Markham. We are on the wreck of the Hyde. It's a 280 foot long hopper dredge sitting at 85 feet of water and the deck's about 65 feet of water. Have a good dive. It's still cold. That's me with the hot pink flippers. Yes, hot pink was cool years ago. Our chief photog, Mike Pelzer, braved the waters too, checking out artificial reefs like the ships, the Hyde and Markham. They're sunk specifically to be underwater habitats for marine life. And believe me, on a dive to ships like these, you see both beauty and the beast. 
last year we had a dive on the, on the hide, um, June 27th of last year, and I've, all my life I've been waiting for just one dive where the sharks are there. Mm -hmm. And we went down on the hide and we were just immersed in a school of sand tiger sharks. Just an incredible day, epic day of diving. I should note, I'm told there are no reports of sandbar sharks ever biting a human, but it's safe to say, look, don't touch. A lot of what we dive regularly, uh, especially the like the two that we did today, the hide and the Markham, those are artificial reefs. Uh, and especially those two have collected a lot of sharks over the last several years and have become very popular. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, historical wrecks as well, or two casualties. Each ship has its own story, down the dark corridors and through the open doorways where all walks of life, two-legged or finned with gills, roam the graveyard.